Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, sulfur, one of the very important mineral in our body. Uh, mainly derived from sulfated amino acids, mainly derived from protein. Uh, some of the sulfated amino acids are methionine, cysteine, homocysteine, taurine. Uh, methionine is an essential amino acid, means you need to have it in your diet on a day to day basis. Uh, cysteine, homocysteine, those are you know non essential amino acids which are formed in the body. Okay. Uh, some amount of sulfur, organic sulfur, is found directly into the food, from the food. And this are onion, garlic, uh, cruciferous vegetables. Any food, you know, uh, specifically uh, some of these vegetables which have some smell uh, and that have organic sulfur in it. Uh, sulfur is also called gandak in Hindi. Gandak means it smells. So sulfur gives that smell. I don't know if any any of you have gone to, uh, you know, Vajuresh, but you any of your hot geysers, you know, uh, in your country or in your uh, in your uh, state, uh, this particular uh, you know hot geysers have uh, sulfur in it. It's sulfated water. Okay. So when this when when you in the when when you're going there to take a bath, you will see that smell coming out of that water, and that's your sulfur. And if you ask, uh, you know, if you find out that who are the people who are coming to this hot geysers primarily, are the people who have some joint problems or they have some skin problem. So that means basically there is probably uh, kind of that knowledge coming from uh, you know generations that uh, you know when you take bath in that uh, hot geysers. It's a sulfated water, so probably sulfur uh, or that mineral helps with the joint pains and skin. And and you know, I mean, if you if you look at it, if you if uh, you know, obviously I'm going to go in detail, but you'll understand that it does help because it produces a lot of those organo sulfur compounds, uh, you know, uh, and that has effect on your joints and skin and hair and pretty much everything. Okay, so we'll go in detail. Uh, sulfur is also present in two vitamin B. Okay, so which are those two vitamin B? Thiamine and biotin. Now, biotin, if you remember, a lot of people take the supplements biotin uh, for hair, right? Uh, people who have hair loss, they take biotin. Okay, now what are the functions of sulfur? So, let's talk about uh, each and every uh, important function that sulfur has. Uh, so cellular energy production and metabolism. So, sulfur is important for, uh, you know, Krebs cycle. Uh, because the acetyl-CoA and CoA, uh, those compounds are uh, made from sulfur. So that's your kind of uh, some of the, you know, products uh, or byproducts, I could say, uh, of uh, that Krebs cycle. So it is definitely, as I said, it is important for formation of energy. You know, it gives you energy. Uh, it also maintains blood glucose level. So sulfur is important for maintaining blood glucose level. Why? Because insulin, insulin is your, uh, you know, uh, hormone which requires sulfur. Okay. Uh, sulfur also protects nerve and uh, nerve tissue. It synthesizes neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are important. Uh, of course, as you know, some of them are acetylcholine, uh, you know, serine, uh, your, uh, you know, your uh, serotonin. So some of those sulfurs are ready, uh, very important. Uh, it improves memory. It uh, dampens excessive firing. Uh, it has antioxidant protection, so glutathione. Glutathione which scavenges or neutralizes free radicals and recycle oxidized antioxidants. So glutathione, I'm sure a uh, lot of doctors and nutritionists who are taking this course would know what glutathione is. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's basically one of the most powerful antioxidant which is present in our body, which scavenges uh, free radical. So free radicals are basically, uh, you know, uh, radicals which causes damage. Okay, it causes inflammation in the body. So it prevents the uh, excessive damage uh, to, uh, you know, through free radicals by scavenging it. Okay. Uh, then uh, sulfur is also important for blood flow. Why it is important for blood flow? Because fibrinogen and heparin, those two important, uh, those are two important organosulfur compounds. So it produces both blood clotting factor as well as anticoagulant. Okay, anticoagulants mean it prevents the coagulation of blood. It prevents the clotting. Okay, and blood clotting factors are basically factors which helps with the clotting. So if you have a say nick on your skin and if you're bleeding, uh, basically that. Uh, 
you know uh, fibrinogen will immediately clot that bleeding it will stop that bleeding okay so sulfur is required for that also uh, cartilage and bones so remember i told you that a lot of these people they go uh, they go to uh, hot geysers so why because uh, the sulfur is important for formation of glycosaminoglycan and also chondroitin sulfate and hyaluronic acid and they are part of cartilage and bones okay so to, to have your healthy bones and your cartilage your joints it's important that we take enough amount of sulfur or sulfated amino acid which is your methionine okay uh, detoxification uh, of course by means of conjugation chelation uh, sulfur is important for detox detoxification means to get rid of toxins in the body and that's primarily because of glutathione okay uh, regulation of dna replication and transcription so basically for to maintain your uh, dna you know uh, that would prevent uh, cancer actually you know so you want to make sure that uh, uh, to maintain your dna uh, health uh, you require sulfur now other effect of sulfur it, it it helps in digestion because it helps in production of hydrochloric acid now hydrochloric acid is the acid which is present in your stomach okay for digestion of food uh, it supports healthy lipoprotein balance so you remember i'm sure everybody knows about cholesterol ldl hdl you know this is a good cholesterol ldl hdl is a good cholesterol and so cholesterol for formation of this uh, cholesterol and uh, you know to have this balance of uh, good cholesterol bad cholesterol you require uh, sulfur uh, adrenal gland support and hormone production so there are some of these hormones uh, which required sulfur your cortisol aldosterone testosterone you know uh, those are important uh, you require sulfur for that uh, then also imagine for pro proper immune response so enhancing you know your uh infection fighting cells so your lymphocytes your cytotoxic t cells natural killer cells these are all the very important uh, cells which uh, which uh, kind of prevents infection it it uh, enhances your immune system okay and for that you also require sulfur now one more thing which uh, i i will go a little bit more in detail is n acetyl cysteine now n acetyl cysteine uh, has lot of function in the body now one of the most important function is it protects against mucus formation in the lungs okay so a lot of time when you have bronchitis and when you have a lot of this uh, cough you go to doctors and doctors will write uh, a nac prescription n acetyl cysteine is also called nac now this for nac actually uh, some more i mean all the doctors would know that when the patient comes with crocine uh, you know toxicity we we give nac and what nac does it basically increases the glutathione level which detoxifies or which removes crocin from the body it, it, it helps in removal of uh, you know uh, acetaminophen from the body okay so nac is very 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 important and you require sulfur for formation of nac okay uh, then for eyes uh, you know your sulfur is important because it decreases the cataract formation and uh, keratin one of the uh, you know most uh, highly spoke about uh, organo sulfur compounds especially among women because obviously we always say oh, we uh, you know i buy keratinized shampoo and this and that you know we spend so much money uh, on the shampoos you know which has keratin but uh, think about if we have food which is high in sulfur uh, which will help uh, form this keratin okay so for formation of skin hair nails keratin is present keratin is present in skin keratinized epithelial cells we know it you know keratin is present in your cornea it's present in your hair so sulfur is sulfur is important for formation of keratin okay uh, here we have just kind of listed all the important organo sulfur compounds which we just discussed so i'm not going to go too much in detail in that uh, some of the sulfur rich food so these are sulfur rich food uh, which are primarily um, you get organic sulfur from this food uh, so here your you know your onion your cauliflower uh, you know of course your beet uh, you know your drumstick leaves and uh, drumstick uh, you know what do i say seeds your drumstick seeds are very high in sulfur in fact you know in us we have this uh, uh, you know this drumstick seeds powder available in the capsule and a lot of people with joint problems they take it so i do recommend that we should have this drumsticks in our diet uh, on a day to day basis so uh, you know either you can put drumstick leaves or also call moringa leaves you know you can make a powder put the moringa leaves in the in the food uh, or you can just have a drumstick uh, you know uh, 
uh, vegetable or you put it in a curry you put it in a uh, dal that you make you know so that's how you get your sulfur okay some of the other uh, uh, food which you can get sulfur from is your garlic okay uh, your uh, your eggs uh, of course your fish okay so this is some of the good sources organic sulfur directly sulfur comes from this food okay uh, cysteine remember i told you about cysteine cysteine is formed in the body but the, you can get cysteine from food also so some of the cysteine rich food is uh, primarily your you know your garlic again uh, pretty much you know garlic your eggs your choli uh, some of the uh, fish uh, you know seeds are high in the cysteine you know so your uh, your black till your sesame seed black sesame seed your white sesame seed peanuts okay soya this is your soya over here okay and your uh, uh, coconut and some of the other foods so cysteine can be available from food also besides uh, being formed in the body uh, methionine is uh, another essential amino acid extremely important to have it in your diet okay as i told you that uh, this uh, sulfated amino acid will release sulfur that sulfur will be used in formation of all this organo sulfur compound that i spoke about okay so which are the food which are high in uh, methionine again remember i talked about uh, peanuts uh, so you make pe peanut powder put it in your food for children food also you can put uh, peanut powder for adults they can just put peanut in the dal or vegetables you know make peanut curry sesame seeds uh, also your liver uh, you know your uh, dairy products are very high in uh, methionine so make sure that your children have you know after two years of age uh, you know uh, if mother wants to start the top uh, milk you know uh, they can start a dairy or even young children six months to tw uh, two years of age you can give them dahi paneer you know this is paneer over here on um, uh, right side corner uh, lower corner and over here this is koa koa is basically uh, kind of made from milk you know mawa we can we call it mawa koa uh, so do use koa in your uh, curries you know uh, very high in sulfur actually very high in methionine which gives out sulf sulfur okay and of course your non-veg food are high in sulfur uh, children who have a uh, good amount of non-veg food we do see that they do have a good good uh, uh, good height and uh, what i've seen actually is uh, there is an article by dr michael golden and he's, he's written extensively about sulfur you know and he feels that uh, basically for your linear growth uh, sulfate and amino acids are very very important okay and that's why i'm kind of stressing on this foods which you must give it to children you know which will uh, help with the linear growth okay.